Hello, hi everyone. This is Tushar from Rasayanika, expert for chemical sciences. Today I am here to answer all your doubts, to clarify all your confusions regarding eligibility and exam pattern for CSIR net chemical sciences. So be with me till then and I am sure that all your questions will be answered. So without wasting any time, let's dive in. CSIR UGC Net Chemical Science is a national level exam taken by all science aspirants who are trying or want to pursue a career in research or lectureship. Now, this exam is conducted by NTA, National Testing Agency, every year twice. Generally, it is conducted in the month of June and December. But you know, due to COVID, the schedule is slightly off the track and CSIR has notified that this exam will be conducted in the month of September. Now, on the basis of marks and ranks obtained from this exam, CSIR net grants JRF, Junior Research Fellowship and LS. Candidates who are awarded LS or lectureship are now eligible to become a lecturer or assistant professor in any university. Now coming to JRF, which is Junior Research Fellowship, candidates who are awarded with Junior Research Fellowship will start receiving their fellowship once they join into research, once they start pursuing research in any university or institute of national importance or national laboratory. Now, this is a computer-based test, so the exam will be conducted online. And the important thing to note is the exam can be taken in both languages, that is Hindi and English. But it is important to remember that while applying for the examination, while applying for the paper, you need to specify which language you want. That is, you need to decide between English and Hindi. Now, if a candidate is applying for Hindi language, for them, the question paper will be in bilingual. For candidates who are applying in English, the question paper will be in English only. So, while applying, please keep this point in your mind. Now, coming to eligibility criteria, all the candidates who have completed their master's or integrated master's or BE, BTEC, Bachelor in Pharmacy or MBBS with at least 55% mark for general and OBC candidates and 50% marks for SC, ST, person with disability or third gender are eligible to take this exam. Now, coming to the candidates who are enrolled in MSc or candidates who have completed 10 plus 2 plus 3 years of above qualifying examination are also eligible to apply but it is important that they need to apply under RA category which is result awaited. I'll just add one more point here. Such candidates need to get the attested form duly certified from the head of the department or institute. Also, candidates who have completed their bachelor's or enrolled into integrated master's PhD program are also eligible to uh, take this exam provided they have at least 55% mark for general and OBC candidate and 50% mark for SC, ST and persons with disability. Now the important point to pick here is such candidates can only apply for fellowship. They are not eligible for lectureship. Coming to BE, BAS, BTEC or BFARM, BFARM students, MBBS students, final year students, they are also eligible to apply for this exam, but they will only be eligible to apply for fellowship. They won't be granted lectureship. Now it is important to note that BAC honors final year students, the students who are awaiting their result are not eligible to apply. Now moving to age limit, the maximum years for JRF is 28 is 28 is 28 for general candidates and there is a relaxation of three years for obc candidates and there is also a relaxation of five years five years for sc st women and person with disability so the maximum age for them is 33 years now for ls for ls there is no age limit at any point of time you can apply this exam for ls before we dive into exam pattern, let's briefly discuss about JRF fellowship and I'm sure this will motivate you to crack this exam with a good rank. So once you enroll into a research program, you'll be getting such ranks. So in the first two years 
of JRF. In the first two years of JRF, once you start pursuing a career in research, you will get 31,000 per month as stipend for the two years. And apart from that, apart from that, you will be getting a contingency grant of 20,000 per year. This is per year. Per year, you will getting a contingency grant of 20,000. You can of course use this contingency grant to buy books, study materials and other important things. Now, once you are done with this JRF and if you are registered into a PhD program, after two years, your JRF will be upgraded to SRF, which is Senior Research Fellowship. And for this, you will be getting 35,000 per month for the next three years and that the 20,000 contingency grant remains constant. So the highlight of this is once you enroll into the program for the first two years, you will be getting 31,000 per month. And after the two years, once you are upgraded to SRF, you will be getting 35,000 per month apart from the annual contingency of 20,000. Now let's move to the exam pattern. Now the duration, the complete duration of the exam is three hours. The complete duration of the exam is three hours and the total marks in this exam will be 200. So in this three hours, you need to answer 75 questions out of 120 questions. So it is important to note, you need to answer 75 questions out of 120 questions and there will be three parts in this examination. Part A, Part B and Part C. So the exam will be for three hours, the total marks will be 200 and in this three hours you have to attempt 75 questions out of 120. So moving to part A, part A contains questions from aptitude and reasoning. Now this aptitude and reasoning will have questions from basic mathematics till 10th class, which includes profit and loss, algebra, linear algebra, etc. topics. Reasoning, which includes nonverbal reasoning like mirror images, diagrams based questions, counting the number of triangles, such logic and reasoning questions will be involved in this section. And in this section, you will be having 20 questions. From this 20 questions, you have to pick up 15 questions and answer them. In this section, for each correct answer, you will be getting two marks. And if you are making a wrong answer, you will be penalized for 0.5 marks. So this 0.5 marks will be deducted from your score. Now, moving to part B and part C. Part B and part C contains questions from chemistry. Now, part B, as I have mentioned here, Part B has 40 questions and Part C has 60 questions. From these 40 questions of Part B, you need to answer only 35 questions. And from the 60 questions of Part C, you need to only answer 25 questions. But for the each correct answer in Part B, the weightage is plus two mark. And for each correct answer in Part C, the weightage is plus four marks. For each wrong answer in part B, you will be penalized 0.5 marks and for each wrong answer in part C, you will be penalized for one mark. Briefly talking about part B and part C, which contains questions from chemistry only. So for part C, part C is the more conceptual part. So whichever topic you are reading, be it organometallic chemistry, be it coordination, you need to go through in greater details and practice question. You need to go through previous year question paper so that you find which topics are important for part B and which topics are important for part C. So briefly, I'll give you some idea about what are the important topics and part B and part C. Be with us in future coming videos, we'll be bringing up the entire list for important topics which comes in part B and part C. So coming to part C, for physical, you can find a major chunk of questions from quantum, from quantum chemistry. You can find questions from kinetics, thermo, basically it's chemical thermo and electrochemistry, electrochemistry. So, for part C in physical chemistry, quantum is very important, thermodynamics, kinetics and electrochemistry. These are the few of the important topics. Now coming to organic part, for organic, for organic reagents is a very important topic. Reagents, reaction intermediate is also a very important topic. For part C, reagents, reaction intermediates, name reactions, 
and the most important of all organic spectroscopy i'll write here organic spectroscopy so in part c for organic chemistry it is organic spectroscopy reagents name reaction and reaction intermediates now coming to inorganic chemistry for inorganic chemistry the most important topics are organometallic chemistry and coordination chemistry so in inorganic chemistry in both part b and part c we will get questions from organic chem organometallic chemistry and coordination chemistry apart from this you also get question from inorganic spectroscopy now coming to part b the most important topics for inorganic chemistry is the same organometallic chemistry and coordination chemistry these two topics in inorganic chemistry has questions in both part part b and part c apart from that chemical bonding chemical bonding is an important topic chemical bonding is an important topic for part b moving to physical chemistry physical chemistry for physical chemistry we have questions same in quantum thermo kinetics and electro in both part b and part c we can see a huge weightage of questions from quantum thermo kinetics electro you can also add group theory okay now coming to part b for organic chemistry we get general questions from general organic chemistry which includes aromaticity acidity and basicity we also get questions from stereochemistry so that's all about part b and part c of the section now coming to some of the miscellaneous questions that are asked by the questions i'll be answering few of them the first is scribe for persons with disability candidates with disability can ask for scribe but the important thing to note here is they need to get it certified by chief medical officer or the superintendent of the health institutions and before the exam they need to fill up annex of 5 now moving to csr ugc net certificates now once the exams are over the rank list is out few of the candidates will be awarded grant by csr and few of the candidates will be awarded grant by ugc now it's a complete random process it does not depend on any rank or anything randomly csr will grant few of the candidates and ugc will be granting few of the candidates and the process of getting the certificate is a uh, different for ugc the certificate is generally directly provided to the student without sending any documentation for csr they will ask for certain documentation like your 10th mark sheet your aadhar card and other details and then only they will send you the certificate now coming to the validity of csr ugc net the validity of this certificate is 2 years so you need to use it in this 2 years now there are also provisions for correction when i say correction it means once you have filled up the form if you have made some mistakes you can rectify them in this window but i'll say please ensure in the first step itself so that you don't make any mistakes so in this session we have discussed about the eligibility and exam pattern for csir net chemical science exam i'm sure all your doubts and queries regarding this are answered properly please like share and subscribe to rasayanika for such contents and we will be bringing up more important videos related to chemical sciences till then bye bye take care